This is me, Undead Viking, and this is Clash Diardici. Diardesh. I'm going to say Clash Diardesh. I do not speak French, so I do apologize for that. Uh, but this is a game of area control with a theme of running a campground in France. How cool is that? So, I mean, when they contacted me about the game, I was kind of like, your game is about what? <laughs> yeah, and it's about running a campground uh, in, in the nature lands of, of, of France. And I was like, you know, that sounds really cool. Let me check it out. And I do a lot of camping. Uh, well, I don't do as much camping as I used to. But when I was younger, I did a lot of camping. Uh, I was a Boy Scout and all that fun stuff. And I definitely have gone camping with my friends and my family. Uh, and I enjoy it a great deal. And so the, the theme did appeal to me a great deal. And um, this is a game, actually, with a lot of meat on the bones, actually. I was kind of expecting some sort of like a kind of a family game. But actually, the game is got a wonderful um, complexity portion to it uh, as far as like um, making your camp better by using these special buildings and special uh, improvements and how you as the other player can kind of mess with uh, them you know and how the how those work and 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 how you can kind of co-opt their buildings and things like that so um, it's got a lot of cool things going on so let me show you in detail how uh, this game is played and then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts all right cool all right, let's learn how to play the game. Now, what you're seeing in front of you is the prototype that I was sent, so just bear in mind as I show you how this game goes. Uh, what you see in front of you may or may not look like the final production copy. So, uh, this I've just gone ahead and just got two player components out here. The game can be played with up to four people. If you do play with two people, you are supposed to shorten the amount of uh, uh, turf, basically, the amount of options you have as far as creating your campgrounds go. So, just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, so like there wouldn't be this wide of open you actually do kind of cut off a lot of the the uh outer areas and so you have a smaller area to uh, create your campgrounds um to begin the game what you're going to do is you're going to have to determine what each person's secret objective is and that's how you're going to win the game um, there is no set turn limit for the game. Uh, each person is going to get one of these cards, uh, naturist camp, family camp, senior camp, backpackers camp, and so forth. And each one of these is going to have a strict like type of uh, amenities or, or what, what, the, what the, the, the camp has to have or not have uh, for it to be successful. And as soon as you complete this objective, then you can turn your card over and you can show that you've won the game. Um, you do, you do have to have a minimum of 10 locations within your camp, so you can't just make a tiny little camp that, that satisfies it. So your campground will be rather large. So if you're the family camp, uh, you would need hiking routes, you need the disco, and you need a canoe rental for it to be uh, one that would want win. Um, so like the high society camp uh, would be different, you know, like five stars and a price quality sales, so on and so forth. And so you can see these are different, but you know, this may seem like it's easier to do, but it isn't because of the fact that the, the, the what you need to get uh, the certain qualities um, are actually like, do very are variable uh, in comparison to what the other players have and plus you also have to remember that each person is going to be vying for control over different locations and kind of warring with one each other and bribing the mayor to like steal people's uh, areas and so forth so i like this one like the biker camp you can see this tough guy here but not adjacent to a disco i i, I like that one anyway so just keep in mind that each person is going to have one of these cards and that is how you determine who wins the game. All right, so each person is going to have also uh, this little player board. Um, this is pretty much like this is the big part up here because this is the different advertising that you're going to spend money on to actually get campers to come to your camp. I'll explain that in just a little bit, but it does have a nice little high season and low season. Um, low season is when you kind of prepare, you buy land, you, um, you uh, get to uh, like bribe the mayor and things like that to kind of get yourself ready for the high season when you're going to be placing the tents and everything on the different locations and earning your money for the next season. Um, also, it shows the different combinations of the mayor benefit its cards they're going to have these different symbols on it and what you can do uh, with when you turn those in uh, you know so rearranging campgrounds take over somebody else's upgrade uh, start an extra settlement stuff like that so just keep that in mind as well now remember all of these campgrounds unless you get um, a, you bribe the mayor all of your locations have to be 
uh, next to one another. So you can't just you know place campgrounds willy-nilly everywhere on the board. Um, and each person on their turn will have to place what's called the reception area, uh, which is uh, this particular uh, token here. They're going to place the reception area on a location, and then they're going to build off of that. And so you know you just put that down. And then on your turn, uh, remember like the low season is considered turn-based, you will be spending your money. And you spend the money after you place your reception. You can't really do anything with that. you got to leave it there. Um, then you're going to pay uh, five coins to add tents, which are basically to expand upon your campground. And so you're going to place those down. And so as you place these down, you will take, obviously, more and more area. And you can definitely, like, cross... The, the, the bridges, or you can't really camp on the river, if you will. Now, river spots are good, and island spots are good for that matter, because uh, if you're by the river, you have more area. More people are going to want a tent there. Um, if you're just in, like, a pasture off by itself, um, that isn't as uh, inviting for somebody to set up a tent. There's nothing really to see, right? But forests are good also. They actually have an increased number of tents, and also the mountains and the pict picturesque hills and so forth. Now, as you're placing these down... Those cost five coins, and you can get put on what's called a star facility down. Now, star facilities are just another one of these tokens um, that are just considered to be like an amenity or a bonus. Now, the reception is considered to be uh, like kind of the same thing, you know. It's but it's just it's just a the reception or whatever, you know, so you're always going to be like a one star facility uh, normally just by having the reception on there. But you're going to increase like how much people are going to like your, your facilities if like you had like here's a little swimming pool you can add. Um, you know, here's a, like a little volleyball court that's, you know, the kind of sports related that they can do. Um, this, uh, here, I'll show you this one first. This one, uh, right here, it's maybe kind of tough to tell, but you can kind of see, and uh, like there's little uh, places to eat, a restaurant, if you will. And uh, this final one, uh, you can see that looks like a, a little house or a hut there. You can see the little windows and such. That is like the sanitation, like, you know, your, your restrooms or, or your, uh, uh, you know, showers, that sort of thing as you're camping. And so you don't place these with a tent, but for the cost of 15, you can place one of these down. You can place, you know, your, your sanitation and you can take over that spot. Now, obviously you don't want to, you don't, you want to leave like your tent locations, uh, that are near the river. You want to leave those. You don't want to put your, your, your amenities on those spots. Uh, you want to try to put them, you know, like in places that aren't going to have as many tents, like in these little pastures or whatever. And so those cost, as I said, 15 coins. This is all also, when you're able to purchase um, these bonus cards over here, uh, these are like uh, the the high quality locations that a lot of your secret uh, uh, prospects are gonna are gonna want. Um, like you know, some of them are like you know, a water park, and then this is the plus two tents uh, for all of the camping grounds within a distance of two. So like you'd get more people wanting to stay because you have a water park. Now, you can't have a water park, however, unless you have, like, say, a swimming pool. So, you know, you do have to have some sort of uh, prerequisite, if you will. Uh, you can't just uh, go into that. Like, you know, you can't have a canoe rental unless you have a place, you know, that's near the river and so forth like that. So you just have to keep that in mind, you know, for when you're going to purchase. These are expensive. They're 25 coins. And so, but they're usually really well worth it because of the special powers that they invoke. And um, you are able, um, you know, if somebody were to, like, Take the one you needed. You are able to arrest that control from the other players by using the mayor, uh, the bribery, and things like that as well. So you, while somebody could maybe mess with you a little bit by taking that one, you can't always get it back. So after each person, here I'll, I'll actually do yellow here. So after each person uh, like has like their their locations, and let's let's actually put a little put another star uh, spot out here. So let's let's maybe put. Um, replace this uh, with their little sports area and let's kind of go here and here but also that we're going to replace we're going to put a restaurant uh, in this location like so 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 we have the different star areas there now the basic game of, of it says that you just have one star for every um, special star location that you have uh, placed down and in this case these would both be two star locations however 
in the advanced game, you actually are judging how far somebody would have to walk uh, to get to those spots and how far they'd be willing to walk to get to those spots. And each one of these has like a different level of what they'd be willing to walk to get to those spots. Um, they're only willing to walk two spots to get to sanitation. And so, like, that's why with this tent gone, it's actually a good thing here because they're willing to walk to the sanitation, you know, here and here. And so your people would be able, want to walk in that location. And they're willing to walk up to three uh, to get to the, the sports area. So one, two, three, like so. So that's a good thing as far as the connection. Now, if we still had, like, the tent in that, that spot. And this is, remember, this is the advanced rules. And, you know, say we had put, you know, the, the sports area there. Um, well, actually, no, I apologize. I'm to accurately show how this works. Let's say, and then put a tent there. So in this situation, you would have the sanitation is here. And so it would be one, two, three for these people in the tent to get to that sanitation. So you get, wouldn't get the bonus for that particular star area. Remember, these are the advanced rules. And so that would not help them at all. But the cool thing about the advanced rules are that if somebody else, um, say, you know, yellow, I, I just, I'm going to grab yellow, had, for whatever reason, maybe built over in that location, and they had a sanitation in that spot, that your people in this, this campground would actually walk over, or I should say, actually, we will put it right there. So they would actually be able to walk to this one and use it. And so it's just, it doesn't necessarily have to be your star building in that situation that would actually make your campground good because people are going to be using each other's star locations. And that is actually a very, very important thing to keep in mind when you're doing this area location. You're going to be putting down these locations for yourself, but also you're going to be kind of annoyed because other players are going to co kind of co-opt uh, those spots that you went to all the trouble of spending all the money on them uh, to do. And so you kind of have to keep that in mind when you're putting those things together. And that's why I like, I think in my opinion, like playing with the advanced rules is a lot more fun because of the fact that it kind of forces you to think and ponder uh, the different choices that you're going to make as far as the different spots that you're going to do. So um, after you've built everything you want to do, that's when you do your advertising. And so you can use up to five on each one of these. And each one of the, like, so uh, internet advertising costs two, um, newspaper is three, radio is four, television is five. And so as you use those, you will have to spend. So if you wanted to use five of these, it would cost 10. If you wanted then, so that'd be 10. And then you did three more at three each, that'd be 19. And if you did all that, you would place that many of these tents on those locations on there to show that you had, you had purchased that much. And now those are people that are going to be coming uh, to your different locations and staying at your campground. And so you populate that uh, during the low season. Um, this is also when, if you have put together uh, enough of the mayor cards, the the bribery cards, and in the in the, the types that are needed to pull this off. You know, let me find a jewelry one here. Oh, there you go. So, if you put, if you have the right cards, you can then turn them in to get uh, the mayor bribe benefits on these locations, and that's when you're going to do that as well uh, during the low season. So, and you can get more of those uh, by uh, when you're going into placing tents. On the board, you can put tents on the mayor uh, location, and then you get a card for each one that you put on there. So, all right. Now, after you've gone ahead through that process, you have placed your locations, you've placed your star locations, you've purchased these cards, you have, uh, you know, put your uh, advertising into place to get those tents available to you. Now, on during the high season, where everybody else is going to be Everybody's going to be putting their tents out on the board. Everybody just does this at the exact same time. This isn't a turn-by-turn -turn basis. Um, you have to keep in mind that certain spots are only going to allow a certain number of tents on each location. And, of course, these are going to be modified you know, by certain things, including that if you have any locations on the island, it is actually uh, you get plus one uh, per location or plus one tent per location if you're on the island. So very simply speaking, uh, if you're by the river, you can put three tents down. If you're in a pasture, you can put one tent down. And if you're on a forest or a mountain location, you can put two spots down. Oh, I should have mentioned this one thing. I apologize. You can't put a star location on a mountain. That's one of the, one of the basic things. So just keep that in mind that you can't, you know, put your restaurant uh, on top of a mountain, if you will. All right. So 
when that happens, then what you're going to do, each player is going to place uh, their their tents down. So like if they, so like yellow would have three tents. I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of switch these around. So let's just say yellow had, oops, these three, and these are a little bit slippery, so I apologize, but has these three tents on their, each of those locations. And then uh, red has three here. And would have one there, and would have three on this location. Now you might have situations where, and then like any extras, as I said, they could put on the mayor's house to get more mayor's cards that they could use later. Now a lot of times you'll have campgrounds like this where it's like, why would I have one with just one, uh, just a pass where I can put one person? Well, you're buying up the land so nobody else can use it, uh, and then you you get that camper, you know, kind of for free, and the campers bring you money. So, but later on, undoubtedly, you're going to be turning that uh, into a, a star building, or you're going to be using your ability, uh, mayor ability, uh, to rearrange your campground to move your tokens around. So just keep that in mind um, that, like, what seems like a suboptimal move at first uh, will eventually pay off for you. So now you determine uh, the star rating of each location. And I'm just, I'm, I'm going to kind of do this arbitrarily here, but so let's say yellow had. Um, like a three-star uh, location, and red had a two-star location. So you put your, your pawn on those, so that, that's, that's how good that person's campground is. And then what each person has to do is they take this uh, deck of cards, and each person has the exact same thing, and they're going to say how much they are going to charge uh, for camping uh, on their location. So you have two, three, four, Five and six. That would like, and that would be how you, the money that you'd get. And whatever you pick, as far as the the, the amount, it's going to cause your rating uh, for your your campground to go down by the the amount of money that you're charging minus one. So if you charge two, uh, the rating for your campground is going to go down by one because basically you have to pay to go. And but so what you're trying to do though is you're trying to actually get so there's a disparity between you and the other player so yellow says i'm gonna it's a three star and they're gonna say so and this is this is done secretly so they're gonna say we're gonna charge you know four for hours and so everybody does that and they reveal and so then we go down one two three like that on, on the on the chart and then maybe red was in a situation where um you know they you know, needed, uh, you know, to like, you know, maybe make some money. They, they were, a, they were, they were kind of desperate and they, uh, were charging more and, you know, they're going to, they're going to charge five. And so that's going to go down four. So one, two, three, four, like so. So then after everybody reveals, you're going to show there's a disparity there of two spots in, in, in between them and the other, uh, the other campground. But technically, because of these rules, we're only going to count uh, the open spots here. So there's one open spot between these two locations. Now, what that means is, is the like at least uh, like there's going to be people that are going to leave these campgrounds. Uh, you know, each one of these spots that have one, they're going to leave those spots. They're going to come and they're going to stay at a yellow location instead because of the fact that they're considered to be a better deal. Now, I'm kind of screwed this up a little bit, but let me just go ahead and put a couple of tents down so we have actually open locations. So what's going to happen then is that we're going to take one from each spot, then, then they're going to go and they're going to stay at a yellow location instead. And so we take a red from this spot and go here. We take a red from this spot and we go here. And those are full now. And we have this guy coming over, but there's no location here, no location here, no location there. So he's actually going to stay behind because there isn't a spot uh, for red to come and stay at, at this spot. And so well, after that, it has been determined and everybody has moved from location to location. What you do then is you total up uh, the number of, of campers that you have. So in this case, there is six. And, you know, remember, uh, we, we charged five for, for red. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five. They're going to have five times five. It's going to be 25 coins is what they're going to earn for this particular spot. But then yellow got three with two more. So they're going to have eight and times four 
is going to be 32 coins. And so they're going to take those coins out of the bank, and then those are coins are going to be used next turn to purchase their amenities and what have you. Uh, yellow does not get to keep those tents. They go back to red in this situation, and then we're just going to start it up, and we're going to go through the whole process of the low season again. And we're going to go on into the high season and back and forth between the two, two different seasons until uh, somebody satisfies uh, their secret objective. And the first person who does that, as I said, uh, will win the game. Uh, you know, I, and I do apologize. I, I, when you have all four players, you will go ahead and, like, obviously, like, it, it, it does get a little bit more uh, complex when you have the, all four players going. Uh, but, like, you you will, like, the, the person at the lowest rated one will always go to the highest rated one. So you kind of, like, so if you had two other figures in here, like, the people from red would go to the highest rated one, so on and so forth, until you... The, everybody has moved, and, and as long as there's space to move. So, um, but they do have a pretty good how to uh, play video actually on the Kickstarter page. You can check that out, and it will show that in, in pretty well detail as well. So, uh, there you go. Uh, that, in a nutshell, is how you play the game and the different mechanisms, the area control. I really the part that I love the most about this is uh, is that the fact that it it, it is. The, the kind of the sharing and like not the basic rules like as far as the 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 star place I mean th and that's a good way for to learn the game to start off with the game um, but I really liked how you can co-opt each other's star buildings and and uh, you can mess with other people as far as you know making like moving your stuff around after doing a bribe and moving your star buildings away so that you lower the the, the, the value of other people's uh, campgrounds and things like that and um, you know and the thing is is after you play the game a few times you kind of get an idea the secret objectives so you can kind of have a decent idea of what people are going for so that kind of opens up the game a lot to like bluffing and counter bluffing as well and and so it, and i really dig the theme honestly i mean because i've never played a game like this and i'm always excited when i when i check out uh new themes in games so uh but i'll talk more about all that in my final thoughts uh, which i'll do right now all right, thank you very much for learning how this game is played. I invite you to go ahead and check out the Kickstarter page and also ask me any questions if you happen to have any about the rules, as always. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to just segue just a brief second here as I want to do. This game reminded me of a classic old ColecoVision game. Uh, I believe it was called Fortune Builder. Yes, that's right, ColecoVision. For those of you who uh, weren't born in like the 70s or 80s or whatever, look it up. Um, but Fortune Builder was this uh, thing where you actually were able to like kind of build up the infrastructure of this mythical land and, and do these things with it. And uh, one of the really cool things about Fortune Builder was like you could build like um, these wonderful like resorts like Swiss chalets and things like that where people could go and, and go skiing. But um, you, if, if like they were uh, doing too well, you as another player could come by and just drop down your coal mining plant right next to their ski zone uh, and they're like, just ruining what they had. And so like in this game, like you actually have the disco which can actually like cause uh, like the surrounding areas because of all the noise and the rock music or whatever. Like it actually like hurts everybody else around them, you know. Except for you, yours are fine because you know you, you're promoting your place as this place with a disco, you know. So it's like got cool things like that where it's like you know people are trying to you know go to sleep or enjoy nature and right across the lake or whatever right across the river there's this <laughs> you know going on you know. And I, I just I dug that part of the game. I, I dig the messing with people as I always do, right? So but. At its core, this is a very, very cool area majority game. This is a game of economics, but the economics aren't the way to win, technically. Money is needed to fuel your campground. It's needed to, you know, get people to come to your campground. It's needed to build up your campground, but that isn't, like, your victory points. There's so many economic games out there that are like, oh, and money is your victory points. But this is an economics game, an economics engine game, where ultimately you're just headed towards an objective that you're trying to reach. And it's kind of a race to it. And I love the fact that it's secret, so you can't just purposely mess with somebody. But, like as I said, as you get to know the game, you get to kind of understand the game. And you can have a good idea of what people might be going for. And then you know what kind of mess with them. But that's where that bluff and counter bluff kind of comes into the whole... Uh, portion of the game. Um, I think that like one of the ways that we were able to help out new players after we played it a few times, 
we kind of um, like showed them all of the different objectives so they n would know and we made sure that that was common knowledge and I, I, I think uh, we downloaded the, the PNP file uh, for the game which you can download you can check out the game on your own if you want but basically we had those available so people could kind of look at the different things that people were putting together and adding together and, and they would you know try to like you know you'd have a good idea of what maybe somebody was going for or how you could block them from getting to that point and so the game actually becomes one of a lot of con uh, a lot of contests going on a lot of uh, virulent uh, interaction with one another and if you like a game with a little bit of teeth like that I think you're gonna really enjoy this now as I said you can play it the the simpler way with the non advanced rules as far as the distance to go to the star buildings and I, I would strongly suggest you play that game play the game first like that but um, to add that extra layer of complexity to like really put some meat on the bone, I really strongly uh, I, I, I advise playing it uh, the secondary way with with the distances that you have to walk to get to those amenities um, mattering a great deal because then your placement of those things, as I said, co-opting somebody else's star building and, and actually improving like the quality of your campground at the expense of somebody else is like an amazing feeling. I really enjoy doing that. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you know when you when you give the game a try for the first time ever so there you go uh i think if you dig like the weird theme like i did i think you're gonna like it especially if you like area control games especially if you like secret objective games uh and if you like games where you are gonna be in direct uh direct opposition to somebody you're you're fighting over a very small amount of land and you're gonna be uh arguing over that and and using the the dirty tricks with the mayor and what have you to um you know keep somebody down below you and, and elevate yourself at the same time. So there you go. That is Clash Diardeche. Maybe that's how it is. Okay, so if you have any questions about it, as always, ask away so I can answer those to the best of my ability. Um, as always, thank you very much uh, for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I am the Undead Viking telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.